And coming up next, we have Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward with Here She Is. Oh, here she is. Oh, don't you just hate the okie cokey? <laughs> okay, Miss Fox, it's nothing to worry about. It's just a routine smear check. Thank you, Doctor. Right, this will feel a little bit cold. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's my son trying to get hold of me. It's his ringtone, I know that. Um, I'll just leave it for now. Just let it ring. Oh, OK. Oh, it's quite persistent, isn't it? <laughs> just ignore it. <laughs> sorry about that. Should end in a minute. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to have to take this. <laughs> Hello, Thomas. Hello, who is it? Oh, hi, Timmy. It's John Partridge. Well, I know a John Inman, but he's very camp and effeminate. Mmm, peas in a pod. Anyway, how do I know you? Remember, you interrogated me the other day. So, Mr Partridge, are you going to give us any clue to who I'm looking for? No. Okay. I'm going to ask you one last time. Does the woman I'm looking for wear a beret? Yes. Is it Maria? <laughs> yeah! I knew it was! Oh, I love it. You try this time. It's easier, I think, when you get the girls, isn't it? I was watching EastEnders the other day and I hadn't realised how transvestite and gay friendly it was. I mean, you've got Ethel and her little willy. You've got Queen Vic and Albert Squeer. I said it. But it's time now to bring you the latest headlines. And later on, we'll be talking to an out-of-work contortionist who says he can no longer make ends meet. But in the headlines for you, reports of a collision on the M3 today. A lorry load of tortoises has crashed into a lorry load of terrapins. Police say it's a turtle disaster. A man in Kent died today. He drowned in a pot of gloss paint. Terrible end, but a lovely finish. An ice cream man in Preston has been found covered in hundreds and thousands. Police say they think he topped himself. And that's the end of the news. So it's good night from him. And it's good night from her. Good, good night. night.
John Partridge. Hello, Welcome darling. To my bed. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, we haven't got any trains. Oh. Hang on a minute. Do not worry. Oh, there we go. Oh, you Cheers. are a magician. Oh, my God. Right, at school. Yes. This is just a bit childish. <laughs> Did all the other kids ask you, can I borrow your rubber Johnny? <laughs> Yes, they did. And that's, we peaked already <laughs> on the show. That's as good as it gets. <laughs> so, from there, when did you decide to think, oh, I'm gonna feel a bit show busy? <laughs> so I was one of those flexible kids and I got into the Royal Ballet School. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, For a year, then I was expelled. She got expelled. That's a lie. <laughs> I was told that dance was not for me oh. and I would be better suited in a stage management role. <laughs> that is literally what the letter said to you my father. I've seen you in a few productions. Uh, uh, I you agree. To agree. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. Shut your face, you. So we scrambled around and found another school which I went to till I was about 14 and a half. And then I got expelled from there too. Don't do it again. It, this is quite an exclusive. Go on, girl. I was, I guess you could say I was having an affair with somebody that was much older than me. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. <laughs> so I was kind of quietly asked to, to leave. But I remember my poor father coming down. He took a black cab all the way from Manchester down to East Grinstead, where my school was, to meet the principals, to hear this horrendous news by the way your son's like 14 and a half he's being diddled by his house master and he needs to leave school my compliments to your school on his impeccable reputation and then we had to have this horrendous cab journey this black cab was waiting all the way back to manchester and i remember the thing i remember about this the most is that the cab cost 280 quid <laughs> now that was in the 80s you imagine what it cost now it cost you about oh five grand God. but in the 80s that was a lot of money why did he take a black cab i think the urgency of the situation was you've got to get here now and my dad didn't drive and so he just took a car you know what happened Go you on. were setting yourself up because that's how they all leave soaps isn't it <laughs> in the back of a black car <laughs> Then I went to a college, and then I got expelled from there too. Well, now I've seen everything. And I remember walking in to see the principal, and she was like, you know, you're expelled. And I was like, well, I'm pretty sure I'm leaving, because like, I've got cats, and I'm like, start next week. I did a lot growing up in that show. My father passed away after that black cab ride. <clears throat> he, yeah. I'm going to say it's for the best. Yeah, he even, couldn't get, he yeah. couldn't take any more, could he, girl? I was only 17, just, just after going to the show, and he passed away. But So I always have really fond memories of that show. I remember on the opening night, when there was obviously um, investors on the table, and they turned around to my dad and said, oh, you know, uh, are you an investor in this show? And I'll never forget my dad saying, yes, yes, I am an investor in this show. I was like, oh, God, what are you saying? You know, saying? He's like, you know, I've invested in him. I know, welling up. Are you welling up? Not really. Oh, well he was probably happy to see you with a pussy <laughs> in the end. Leave my pussy alone! And then from there on in, you took over the West End, really, didn't you? I did a lot of shows, yeah. There's no business like show business. I was working front of house and I saw oh, you here we go. on to Paris. I loved that gig. Yeah, and do you know what? I'm glad you turned it round for me because I watched it, I have faith in you, and you did get better. <laughs> I said it. Mm, I'm afraid I have to agree with that. I, but I did enjoy that because I met one, I made a lifelong friend on that show, a girl called Paddy Russo, who took over from Danny Minogue. Who? Who I fing hated. I had to sing a duet with her, and all I did, I went on stage and I just said, Can you turn Danny down in my mix? That's all I said. And that was the truth. I didn't go off and say, She's fing tone deaf, turn her off. Could have said that, didn't say that. Came off saying, that's all I said. And then the seed was sown then, wasn't it? I don't like you. But that was all that I had said. And then I was like, right, guy, if you really want to be c***ty, let's get c***ty. I'm after you. And one way or another, I'll sink you. And did you? And then I Tell did. Tell me some things. There was this article <laughs> in, I think it was either The Sun or The Mirror or something like that, that had done this thing saying, look at the many faces of Danny Minogue, how her face had changed from where she was now, from when she was like, whatever it was that mm. she appeared in Home and Away or something like that. And I got all those pictures and I printed them off and I stuck them all over the theatre. I stuck them in the toilet, in the toilet. <laughs> I 
can't believe I'm telling you this. <laughs> I can't. But it's true. I can't go. But I did, and I stuck them <laughs> oh, all goodness. over the theatre. And how did that end then? Really badly. <laughs> Oh, very uncalled for, isn't it? I heard somewhere that you got disillusioned with it all, mm -hmm. and you were going to give it up, and then you got the I was. call from EastEnders. So a couple of months later, when I was um, doing hand jobs on Woolwich Common to um, pay my bills, uh, I get the calls. I know. But did my check clear? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. Um, she got, I got the call to, to go in. Hello? And I got to the casting and um, read uh, and came out. And before I'd even got halfway up the road, they were like, look, you were terrible, but you are the part. What was your first scene? Oh, the first scene was awful. It's so awful. Well, I was going to say the same. <laughs> It was an eating scene. It was eating. And I didn't realise that you don't eat. And no, you know, no fucker that I was working with told me not to eat either. No. So I'm shoveling the whole thing down and we were in and there all day. For continuity. All day. First day at EastEnders, shit myself. <laughs> Literally. Well, that's a memorable experience, isn't it? <laughs> You'll never forget that one. No, no, no. No, Megan. You were in for. Three years? Five years. Five years. It's a long time, right? Well, it seemed longer to me. <laughs> it was, I, I, it was amazing. I, I mean, I'm very grateful for it. Of course I am. And you should be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, a, like I say, it is a massive learning curve. I learn a lot. I learn an awful lot. I yeah. made some lifelong and you, friends. And I, you had a lot to learn. <laughs> by the looks of things. You're about that Funny. It's really difficult to tell a gay story at half past seven in the evening without like half the nation throwing their dinner at the screen and you know shouting faggot and all the rest of it. It is. Do you think that's why they were throwing their at yeah. the screen? Nothing to do with the acting. Right? <laughs> nothing yeah. to do no. with my. Oh, nothing. you think it's just you're blaming it on being yeah, gay? Yeah, I'm blaming that. I'm blaming. Oh, I'm blaming. But well, that's it, that is how you can cope with it. And if <laughs> that's how you're going to cope with it, I'm going to go with it. That's no, how I don't want to see gay. <laughs> what a gay day. So you were a Christian, mm. you went out with a Muslim, oh, isn't it? No, that's good, that's isn't it? the beauty isn't it? That's of good. it. Do you think they were having a laugh? <laughs> Clearly. The writers? No, I, no, I don't think they were, actually. I don't think that was ever on... No, the... I meant by hiring you. <laughs> You're hired. Tell me why you left EastEnders. I left EastEnders because my mother got Alzheimer's and I was her primary carer. So... And that's the truth. Tell me why you left EastEnders. <laughs> you see, that's what is so often forgotten. What, what was your first thing as you left? I went to Chorus Line. I went to Chorus Line at the Palladium for... Um, I went straight there, which is great because it was a short show. It plays all the way through in two hours and it meant I could be home and it meant I could be on call and it meant I could, you know, be there, mm. you know. When you say a short show, <laughs> are you talking about the rum? <laughs> Cheeky piece! But it meant I could be at home and I actually, you know... Do you know what? The night I came to see you, I wish you were at home. <laughs> I said it! <laughs> Celebrity big brother. Uh, do I regret it? I can't regret it because it provided, you know, my mum with the best yeah. care that she could have at that difficult time in my life. Would I do it again? No. Okay. Of course I wouldn't. Just to let you know, I don't know if you know this, this is, it's going to be, no, <laughs> Come on, serious. come on, I can't wait. Do you know that David is dead? <laughs> David's dead. No, he's not. <laughs> you can't, you can't. But I came out and four days later, I had to open in Chicago, four, literally four days. And I was shell-shocked. I was literally... That will explain your reviews. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. Your what are you doing now? Well, I'm just about to start my Christmas season Which at, is the, at Sleeping Beauty. Then I'm taking my one-man show, my new one-man show, Stripped, to the other palace at the beginning of February. And then and I've what got are you doing in that? Singing, dancing? A little bit of everything. Oh, I might not come. <laughs> oh, titty, you not. Okay, we're going to do a little selfie. Okay. Here we go. Are we good? Oh, here we 
go. Cheers, girl. <laughs> Cheers, girl. Right. Have you heard about my comedy slot? Have you seen my comedy slot? Everyone's seen your comedy slot. Who hasn't? <laughs> well, what I do is I make little scenarios around comedy clips. So I've heard. You said it. <laughs> um, and this is a group. And I've made a scenario that the blonde girl in it is mm. leaving after this gig. Okay. And the other two are furious. Right, okay. Okay, let's go for it, shall we? I'm excited. Here we go. So, the blonde one is leaving the group. These two on the right are really not happy. Here she is, look at her. <laughs> I thought it was three women and then I saw you had a car. She's got a microphone there, did not she? <laughs> Who hasn't? Look at her on the right as well. Here she goes. Oh, you, she's not. You know her outfit has had 14 panels put in over the time she's been in the group. I said it. <laughs> Look at her. So watch this. There's going to be no eye contact from Blondie. So here we go. Last gig. They hate her. <laughs> I'm not looking at him. <laughs> I am not looking. And look at her on the right. Hate Oh him. my God, is that a wig bitch? Isn't it? Look. Yeah, not looking. Here we go. Here we go. Lovely falsetto. Isn't it lovely? Look at her, just Ruth Maddock on the right, isn't it? <laughs> Before she did the IDI days. But look at not looking, not looking, not looking, and she's gonna, she's gonna hurt herself in a minute. Here we go. What's she gonna do? Hang on, not her. Well, she'll have a, she'll have a little knock in a minute afterwards. She's gonna do a turn and knock. So look out for that one. Here we go. Look at this. So look, she's added this. Watch this. She's added. Look. <laughs> She wasn't supposed to do that, but she thought, sod it, she's leaving, I'm putting all my bits in. Here we are, look at her now, oh, she, no, he she's trying to trip her up here. There she is, oh, I'm not, I'm not offended. Here we go, look at, here we go. Literally, have you seen that blonde woman look at them once? Look, she's not looking, she's livid. It's quite the outfit, isn't, isn't it, girl? it? What about his? I think he could have it taken in a bit, do you? That's, it's, that's the, it hurt. It's that. Shut it down. No, oh, it really is. I've got what you said. <laughs> You're right. Watch this. Yeah. That's what you would do to that move, wouldn't you? Here she oh, goes. Oh, yes. Here we go. Look at the hands out to the front. Look and uh, do and you know kick. Who, do you know who they are? Do no, you know who they are? I don't think they know who Come they on, are. give them a name. What's the name? Who are would they? Would they be called? <laughs> Kapaz or something. <laughs> Kapaz. That's, that's really good. Isn't I'm going good? with Kapaz. Go with Kapaz. Kapaz. Look at Kapaz. But look at Kapaz and Kaz on the end. Because they'll use their names. <laughs> She's leaving. She can't Kaz wait and jazz for the and last bit of this. Kaz, Jazz and Baz. That's aren't they? it. Kapaz. That's Here she goes. Look. Woo. That hair. Boom. They are. Look at. Boom! Yes! Here we go. And then look at, literally, she's thrilled. She's off. Oh, she'll be thrilled to get out of that group, don't you? Oh, where's she gone? Mmm, I'll give her a duff, duff, duff she's not seen before. I said it. This is one of those Timmy toilet shows. I had a dream there was a rainbow over the mountain and over the stream. I'd rather be slapped again by Zainab Masood than watch this mess. Watching the sun rise over the trees. Whoa, Silly bitch. I was a judging over the rainbow. You're more over the hill. I can't sit around here. I've got to get to the Grove Theatre, Dunstable. Pantomime. I wish that we could stay like this forever. You said it. Westbert. <laughs> Yeah, it's because I'll sweat.